Welcome to Live from Size Lounge, showcasing alumni of Iowa State University and Cyclones Everywhere, making communities, Iowa, and the world a better place. Hello, Cyclones Everywhere, and welcome to Live from Size Lounge. My name is Matt Van Winkle with the ISU Alumni Association. I hope your summer is off to a great start and to kick off the start of summer, the latest issue of Visions Magazine is now available. Members can access the issue right now on our website, isualum.org, and it will be arriving in mailboxes this week. The issue focuses on innovation at Iowa State, taking you inside the new Student Innovation Center on campus and highlighting a variety of student and alumni entrepreneurs. If you're not a member and would like to receive the magazine, it's easy to join today. Just visit isualum.org slash join to learn more about all the great benefits of becoming a member. Today we are joined by Mark Williams, a 1986 Iowa State graduate with a degree in architecture. Mark has spent the last 25 years working at the architecture firm HKS Incorporated, specializing in sports and entertainment venues. His most recent project was the completion of the state-of-the-art SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles, California, which was featured on the Discovery and Science Channel show, Super Stadiums. Please help me welcome Mark Williams to Live from Size Lounge. Hey, Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you grew up and how you ended up studying at Iowa State. You know, I was born and raised in Marshalltown, Iowa. So very early on, I learned about the Cyclones. And uh, about sixth, seventh grade, I decided I wanted to become an architect. I just loved drawing and building things and creating things and that kind of thing. And so it was very natural for me uh, to come to Iowa State and did some of the summer early on little programs to understand the college of uh, design and, and what it was like to be an architect. And it was just a natural fit to come to Iowa State. How did your time as a student here at Iowa State help prepare you for the work that you're doing today? You know, the, I think the, the thing that it did was it opened, you know, my eyes and my ears to the influence that an architect could have. And, you know, being able to, to take a problem, take an opportunity, and, and be able to create something that elevates you know, the environment, the experience, the impact that it has on people. I think that was the big thing that I, I learned and got me excited. And then, you know, it sort of reaffirmed my, this is what you want to do for the rest of your life. And I didn't, you know, I didn't know that walking into the doors of, of Iowa State and didn't, you know, fully under, understand or appreciate the impact that an architect could have. Uh, so that's probably the biggest thing. How much has architecture changed uh, from when you were a student uh, here at Iowa State? You know, um, I don't know if it's really changed that much. I think um, the the palette, if you will, I think has changed, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. the things that can happen in buildings, the materials that are used, the products that are used. I think, you know, things like sustainability, you know, an environmentally conscious design, things like that have changed and evolved, mm -hmm. I guess. But I think to me that just means that we have you know more colors on the palette and a broader spectrum uh to deal with which for designers that's a very exciting thing because that you know is like what i said before it's just opportunities and, and and new ways to solve whatever the equation is yeah well yeah. think about architecture really what it comes down to is that creativity is really the core the core piece right. of it right there's yes. architecture can be done so many ways the same but what really sets uh, unique you know, buildings apart is that unique design, that creativity. And you were part of a major, uh, you were a major piece in that construction of the new SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles, which is obviously now home to the, the Rams and the Chargers and the NFL. Uh, yes. What was your role? What was your role on this project? And what was that like uh, working on? I was the uh, principal in charge really from minute one uh, with Mr. Kroenke in St. Louis, by the way. I started working on that project and we looked at St. Louis first, the uh, Edward Jones down there. And then that led to um, the team leaving and going to LA. 
So I've been there from day one. It's an incredible, incredible uh, project. I don't think there's anything else like it on the sports and entertainment side in the world. You know, and we've done some very impactful buildings like AT&T Stadium for Mr. Jones in Dallas and U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. And and we have great projects and, and great clients, but, you know, Mr. Kroenke has really raised the bar with what um, – we have helped him create there in California. You were not the only Iowa State alum that was part of this project. There were other Cyclones that had a big piece in the uh, design and the management of this project as well, yeah. right? Yeah, it's really a sort of a neat little thing that you know not a lot of people know about, but you know, I've been in Dallas for 24 years at HKS. And you know, like I said, we've sort of grown our uh, sports group from really infancy, you know, in year one to being the one of the firms of choice globally with with some of the um, higher profile and very um, successful projects we've done. The neat thing that is sort of behind the scenes on that is, you know, in our Dallas office when we did SoFi, you know, we had Chad Sheckel, Iowa State grad, Andy Henning, Iowa State grad, JJ Kosinski, Iowa State grad, Michael Hurd, Iowa State grad, working on that project. So here we are sitting, and you know we've got a team that's got anywhere from 15 to 20-ish people working on it at any time. And over a third of that group are Iowa State grads doing the most impactful, all the eyes on the planet, looking to see what the Rams and the Chargers and Mr. Kroenke are doing in Inglewood. And it's in the and, and the design is being driven by cyclones, so that's just so proud of that and so cool and and just so neat to have that happen, you know, within HKS and and especially on a project like that. So was that was that by accident or is that a, a strategic move on your end to bring on uh, Iowa State grads for this big? Hey, the, the, the cream rises to the top, as they say, right. you know. So let's get the. <laughs> Let's get the good cream there. No, it's, you know, yes, it somewhat happened, but any chance I have to, um, to connect with an, a, a student or former or recent graduate from Iowa State, I make sure I do that. You know, A, they have never let me down the quality of the person that walks in. You know, there's just something special about uh, the state and going to school, you know, at Iowa State, and there's, a, there's, there's something that comes with that that's very special, I think. I mean, between the College of the Design and uh, the engineering program at Iowa State, there's really a lot of alums doing some really cool, some really yeah. cool things out there, some really neat projects, uh, really, really pushing, the bound, pushing the boundaries, and uh, as we like to say, innovating here at Iowa State, that's the new uh, the new slogan we like to go with. There's actually, I don't know if you've been back to campus recently, but the Student Innovation Center just went up on campus, which is a, a state-of-the-art facility where students from all colleges have a key role in collaborating on different uh, different projects and working together. So it really sounds like kind of what you've been doing with that project. Well, well and it's, it's uh, great that you mentioned that because that's a great segue for, I think, the most impactful thing we do. And I talk about this all the time. You know, the, the buildings that I'm fortunate enough to design and work on are oftentimes the, the number one destination for people in a region. So, you know, if people come to Ames, they want to go see, you know, the Hilton Magic and they want to go to Hilton Coliseum and they want to see that. And oftentimes that's the place that they go to first. You know, they watch it on TV. They have memories when they were inside of there that are the top of their of the list for their memories. So the thing that we have done, I think that I'm most proud of is we have elevated the design, the experiences, and the definition of what the building type, the sports entertainment building types can be. And we have elevated that to a level that's up equal to and surpassing those lifelong generational memories that occur inside of our, our buildings. And if you think about, we talk about going back to the Roman Coliseum 2000 years ago. And if you look at, you know, many sports entertainment venues that came uh, hundreds of years after that, 
the innovation, the evolution of the building type was not as significant as anything else around you. If you looked at, you know, a home in that time frame and a, a modern day home here, it's very different. If you looked at sports venues, some actually have decreased <laughs> in the quality of the design, the quality of the environment. So what we're doing is we're changing the definition. When you walk in to Mr. Jones's AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas, when you walk into Mr. Kroenke's SoFi Stadium in, in Inglewood, California, it doesn't look like a football stadium you've ever been in. There's experiences that you can do in there. There's food and beverage that meets the quality of any restaurant in the LA basin. There's um, environments and hospitality finishes that can equate to anything that's, that's out there in LA. So that's probably the thing that we've done. And I think that's just in, innovation and mm -hmm. rolling our sleeves up and trying to figure out, you know, how to make that environment and that experience better for fans. Yeah, I love that. I mean, when you go to a, a sporting event, you really want it to be, I mean, you, you really haven't done your job as an architect if people leave there and it's a forgettable experience. You want people to go yeah. in remembering yeah. that experience that they had. Do you want them to walk around the stadium, soak it all in, yeah. looking at all the, the big structures and uh, the design? If you think about it, that. if you think about it, you know, most people I talk to, and I, and I do this a lot, I ask them if they to remember the first time they were in a large, significant sporting entertainment venue. And they get emotional about it because they remember, you know, I remember when I went into Wrigley Field with my grandfather and I'll never forget that day. It was the closest I ever was to my grandfather the day that we sat there and watched the Cubs, for example. And that's, that's the, the, the incredible thing that happens in these venues. And all we're trying to do is create the environment so that can happen at even a higher level and be as memorable as whatever's happening out on the on the ball diamond or the or the football field or the soccer pitch or whatever it is. So that's yeah. And I think that's just a very special thing. And it really started, you know, walking into Iowa State and, mm -hmm. and here we are now, you know, twenty some years later. That's right. Well so for those who haven't been to SoFi Stadium uh, out in California, uh, it's the largest in square footage and the most expensive in the country coming in at about five billion dollars. Uh, Mark, what makes this this venue so unique from the others for, like I said, for those who haven't been there, what's what's so cool about this stadium that you enjoy? You know, it's it's the diversity and flexibility in the venue. So for example, the there is a 6,000 seat performance venue that's underneath that big roof that you see in the images and has the LEDs and the planes that fly over and look down on it. I don't think the world knows this yet because it hasn't, you know, been open for a lot of people to enjoy that building. But there's a 6,000 seat performance venue that can compete with any other performance venue that's out there, meaning, you know, full stage and fly and 6,000 incredible seats and environments, uh, you know, and, and uh, amenities associated with all those. And it's underneath that roof and right next to the stadium and the world doesn't know that that's there yet so there's things like that that can happen and there's environments and clubs and and spaces where you can have you know weddings to um holiday events to corporate meetings and everything in there so there's just we've made the venue so that 24 7 around the clock things that are different scale can happen inside that venue that's, I, I need to get out there. And I, I know you were telling me that you're out in Las Vegas right now working on a new project. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're currently working on and what you have uh, coming down the road? Yeah, a lot of things happening. You know, I think here in the last uh, four months, a lot of things have um, started back up again, which is great. But we're looking at, you know, arenas and ballparks and, and we're doing it globally. I think one of the other neat things that happened is, you know, people see our U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, you know, during the Super Bowl, they see that globally and they want to know who did it. They want to be there and they want to try to figure that out. So we're we're doing a ballpark in uh, Hokkaido, Japan right now. We're doing projects in 
uh, stadiums in China. We're doing stuff in Australia. We're doing stuff all over the world that's very impactful and, and trying to create those environments, you know, globally, which is a fun thing for us to do. Very cool. So, uh, Mark, Iowa State grads are using their degrees to make their communities, Iowa, and the world a better place. How do you feel that the work that you're doing is making an impact in the sports and entertainment profession? I think I'm, you know, using that knowledge and that experience to, it's really what I've been talking about. It's to create environments mm -hmm. that change people's lives. And these events, you know, that people go to, whether it's, you know, going to a concert to see their favorite performer or their favorite quarterback or their favorite baseball player, they will take those with them till, you know, the end of their life often. And I just wanna, as an architect, have that experience for people at the highest level possible and create the environment that they can celebrate those moments with their loved ones and their friends and their families. So that's what I think about every day. I think about the nine-year-old boy walking in there with his dad and never seeing a baseball game, a major league baseball game, and knowing that when he's 89, he's going to remember that moment with his father. He will never forget that moment with his father. So what can I do as an architect to make that moment for that young boy even more special and even more memorable. And I just, that's what I do every day is think about that nine year old boy and how do I do that? How can I be a better architect and make his life better? Well, Mark, thank you so much for connecting with us and sharing your story with Cyclones Everywhere. You bet, thank you, I really appreciate it. Go Cyclones. Right. Go Cyclones, thanks Mark. That's Mark Williams. Thanks so much for watching live from Size Lounge. We'll see you again next time. This series is made possible by members of the Alumni Association. If you are interested in staying connected to the university and receiving all the benefits and services of being a member, visit isualum.org.